the capacitor, the potential energy, the potential storage component, the capacitor. Well, the characteristics of a capacitor are it is actually a dynamic component. It has memory. It stores the past values and the present values depend upon the values of the past. And it is a potential storage component and it is dynamic in nature, not at all algebraic and has memory. And I'll tell you the reasons pretty later. Well, now, what is a capacitor? Well, a person who has least knowledge about capacitor or if at all this is the first time if he hears the word capacitor, I'll give you an analogy so that the concept of capacitor is understood pretty easier. Take a tap, water tap, from which water is poured into a water tank. So this is the tank and the capacity of tank is what you can see. Well and uh, this is in turn connected to an output tap where the flow, the input flow the, or the inflow is delivered outside through a tap. And uh, this is the height the height of the liquid inside the tank. Well, now let's relate this to the capacitor. Well, the flow, the inflow of the charge or the current into the capacitor is analogous to the inflow of the water and the capacity of a tank is actually the capacitance of a capacitor where the height of the liquid inside the tank is analogous to the potential. I hope you are able to understand and the amount of liquid inside the tank is analogous to the charge inside the capacitor. Well, once again, the capacity of the tank is actually analogous to the capacitance of a capacitor and the amount of water, the volume of water inside the tank is charge inside the capacitor and the height or the head of the amount of water inside the tank is analogous to the potential of the capacitor. And the capacitor is generated by a metal plate into which the current flows and develops a charge over the plate which in turn develops the opposite charge over the other end of the plate and in between there's a dielectric charge is equal to or the Q is equal to the current into time that is whenever current flows into a capacitor the charge is given as current into the time taken for it to flow inside the capacitor and the charge is even de defined as uh, the potential into the capacitance that is whenever you take a capacitor the capacitance is the total volume which it can use and the V or the potential is actually the height. So Q, the total charge or the volume of charge inside the capacitor is C times the H or the, capac uh, the potential. So Q is equal to CV. These are the equations Q equal to IT and uh, Q is equal to CV which we use in stable operating mode. mode so there are no transients stable operating mode is defined as the operating mode which doesn't have transients that means which doesn't change with the change in time now if at all we consider the dynamic operating mode I equal to C into dV by dt 
that is the change in the voltage or in the potential with the change in time see in steady state I average is equal to zero but in dynamic operating mode it is I equal to C into dV by dt if I told you integrate let's integrate what happens well whenever you integrate C is a constant right so it is given by 1 by C into V equal to integral I into dt so by here we can see that I'm sorry I think so I went wrong somewhere yeah I'm sorry here V equal to 1 by C into integral of I dt yeah this is right since uh, the dv by dt uh, becomes v whenever it is integrated and the c comes over here and i gets integrated so that's how so the v equal to 1 by c into integral of di by dt this shows that it is bounded by initial and final value that means the value of potential before is taken into consideration that's the reason why a capacitor is a dynamic uh, component it depends upon the initial and initial values the past values that's the reason we call capacitor as a dynamic and a memory unit well the integral indicates the initial values of voltages and hence we can prove that this part hence we can prove that the capacitor has memory now uh, so the equations friends you just need to uh, note these equations whenever I draw a box that's the time you need to get serious please note all this q equal to i into t q equal to c into v uh, di in dynamic operating mode that is when there are transients then potential equal to 1 by c into integral of i dt or i equal to c into dv by dt if at all you differentiate this comes into picture and if at all you integrate this comes into picture so that's how um, the equations are derived types of capacitors same as the resistors which we have derived we need to find the capacitor types and I'm sorry I forgot the concept we forgot to derive the energy <laughs> the energy storage in capacitor energy storage in capacitor what is the energy store in a capacitor well we know that energy equal to power into time well we know that power is V into I where time is equal to T now whenever you integrate this with time units of I mean the magnitude of time we get energy in a capacitor equal to 1 by 2 into CV square that is the potential energy because the capacitor stores the potential thus a capacitor is known as a potential energy storage device or a component we have to move on to the capacitor types right I'm sorry we have stuck here so capacitor types what are the types of capacitors well there are namely two types of capacitors there are polarized and uh, non polarized by the name itself you can understand what is meant by polarized and what is non polarized well if at all you take a capacitor the plates the metal plates are here like this and uh, whenever the one of the metal plate one of the metal plates uh, polarization is constant or it is fixed then it is called a polarized capacitor that means whenever you take a capacitor and when one of the side of the metal plate is always positive then it is called a polarized plate capacitor is here and non polarized is the one in which the positive and negative uh, polarities may be on any of the plate so that's how a polarized and non polarized are uh, differentiated uh, the polar example of a polarized capacitor is uh, electrolytic capacitor 
electrolytic capacitors are always polarized because it depends upon the electrochemical series which comes as positive which goes as negative I mean which uh, gives out electrons which takes in electrons so that's how an electrolytic capacitor works on and a non polarized capacitors are like ceramic capacitors polymer capacitors or metallized polymer capacitors metallic yeah metallic polymer capacitors and the symbols are two parallel plates in this way or you can even um, denote in the, I'm sorry you can even denote in this way where this is a polarized capacitor because the one of the plate has the positive symbol here that means it's a polarized capacitor or you can even have a variable capacitor where you can actually vary the capacitance levels of the capacitor and so these are the symbols which you get confronted whenever you go through a book or different types of uh, literature well this is about capacitors I hope everyone of you enjoyed and understood any doubt please uh, mail me or please write a comment uh, in the YouTube page or clear your doubts or if at all there are any kind of uh, mistakes which I've done I'm sorry for that and thanks for watching thank you